Okay, let me read this question first and kind of skimming through it, I didn't recognize it fully, so let me see. Um, as the Voyager spacecraft uh, penetrated into the outer solar system, the illumination from the sun declined relative to the situation on Earth, how bright is the sunlight at each of the Jovian planets? Um, okay, I guess this is a uh, module three, <laughs> module two question that is masquerading as a module three question. Because so to answer this question, what you really need is the inverse square law of um, not the gravitational attraction, but of the uh, the light intensity. And I'm pretty sure that's what I tell you in the hint. Uh, we looked at the property of light in chapter five, leading to inverse square relationship. And we covered that in module two. Um, but I guess <laughs> it's one of the number of questions I could ask, so I did. So as a reminder, the um, when you look at section 5.1, you will see this figure that illustrates why intensity of light uh, decreases as a uh, reciprocal of distance squared. It, this is the uh, figure that you should have seen. And, um, and um, the, it's uh, kind of illustrating why that's the case when energy is conserved and light comes from a point source. So uh, what this tells me is that whenever some uh, distance increases by some factor, I can say that the light intensity decreases decreases by the, the that factor squared reciprocal. So let me do the calculation for each of those distances given there. So uh, it's uh, useful to note that in all these cases, we are comparing it to earth. We are all comparing it to earth and um, earth is a useful measuring step, stick because the distance between earth uh, and sun distance is given, by, given as one astronomical unit. So when they tell you that um, Jupiter is at 5.2 AU, it's actually telling you by what factor distance has increased from Earth to Jupiter by a factor of 5.2. So, um, so let me just pull out my calculator so that I can do that inverse of square calculation. Uh, ah, not a long clock. So, um, so let me do the inverse first. The order here doesn't matter, but let me do inverse first. So one divided by 5.2, that's the this uh, factor by which distance has increased. And I need to square it because it's inverse of square. And oh, I need to put equal sign to get the result. Uh, percent, so let me just multiply by 100 so that I can get the answer in percent. Three points, um, let me round it to three sig figs, so 3.70, that should be it. Um, let me just submit it to make sure that I'm on the right track and I'll do the rest. Because I think, yeah, rest of the numbers will be smaller and potentially less intuitive. So, so Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, the amount of light uh, will go down by, by, by the same relationship. So one divided by 9.54, uh, square it uh, equals, and I'm just gonna imagine moving this dot two decimal places. So that's gonna be 1.0, well, 1.10, 1.10. Um, one divided by 19.19 squared. <laughs> I'm using the keyboard to type in that square. Um, that is one of the ways to do it. You should always know how to use your own calculator. So moving two decimal places, there should be 0 0.272. Uh, 0 0.272. And I think one of the reasons I was asking this question was so that you can see just uh, how much dimmer sun gets at those distances. Um, so one divided by 30.06 squared equals, um, so two decimal places, 0 0.111. 
0.111%. So at the distance of Neptune, the sun is almost a thousand times as bright as uh, it is from Earth. And um, I think when you look at hard science fiction, like uh, the Expanse series, <laughs> which there's novel and there's also Amazon series, uh, it's a, one of the fairly well-done hard sci-fi and they do accurately represent how in the colony worlds on the moons around the Jupiter, one of the things they have to deal with is the fact that the sunlight is much less. So they have orbital meters around the Ganymede to, uh, to um, concentrate the sunlight at the farms. Um, and yeah. It's funny you just mentioned that. We were just watching a show with them. Um, the Expanse is one of my son's favorite. Uh, he's in middle school and he's also learning about the solar system. So we are on the same, my son and I. It's, it's very exciting and we love The Expanse. It's a really good show. Yeah, yeah, and I would really recommend the book because the TV show necessarily takes some shortcuts, you know, uh, but in the book, the authors do take care to try to stick to the known science, at least okay. until the proto-molecule comes along. <laughs> <laughs>